Welcome back to TFT Central. Today we're going to be taking you through the best settings for the new ASUS ROG Swift PG27AQDP. This is their 480Hz OLED monitor. We'll set this up for both SDR and HDR usage. You can use these settings whether you're connecting a PC, a games console or another device. We'll just guide you through all the best settings including SDR, HDR and the OLED care options. If you find that your settings seem to be all greyed out like they are here on the screen at the moment, you need to come down into system setup and you need to change the power setting from power saving mode to performance mode. We've got the screen on its default settings at the moment and we're just going to start by changing the OLED care options. So let's come down to that menu. You can see that a lot of these are turned on by default. You want to leave as many of these on as possible to help mitigate the risks of image retention, although we found some of them to be quite annoying and potentially impactful of brightness as well. The main ones that you might want to consider changing would be this outer dimming control, which dims the edges of the screen, and that does create a bit of a vignetting effect, which we personally don't like, and we find that distracting. So we're gonna turn that one off. Auto logo brightness is the other one that you may want to have a play around with. That does seem to impact brightness in SDR and desktop applications quite a bit. But if you don't find any problems with it, let's leave that turned on. The rest of the settings can stay on, but if you find any of them distracting, like the screen move, for instance, you could either turn that down to a lower setting or turn it off altogether. The OLED care options are actually remembered independently between SDR and HDR mode, so you're going to need to remember to set these when you enable HDR and Windows later on as well. With the screen running in SDR mode at the moment, you can see that HDR is turned off in the menu here. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come into the gaming menu and the game visual menu and we're going to change it from the default racing mode onto user mode. You could configure the racing mode or any of the others as well but we just prefer to use the user mode for our custom settings. In the image menu we're going to first of all enable the uniform brightness control. That will ensure that you get a nice consistent brightness across the screen regardless of your window sizes and your content. That's really useful for desktop applications. With uniform brightness enabled, we're going to turn the brightness setting down to a level of 37. That should deliver you a luminance around 120 nits. You could turn that up to 50 for 150 nits or 71 for 200 nits. We're going to leave that on 37 here, but feel free just to adjust that to whatever's comfortable for your ambient lighting conditions and user preferences. Contrast can be left at 80. Just check that blue light filter is still turned off and vivid pixel can be left at 50 as well. In this menu, you'll also see the OLED anti-flicker option. That's off by default, but if you do experience any flicker during VRR situations in your games, you can enable one of these settings here. Just have a play around with that if you need to. Next up, we're gonna come into the color menu. Color space, we're going to leave on wide gamut for now. We'll come back and set up sRGB mode in a minute. Color temp, we're going to switch off the 6500K mode and select the user mode. And in here, we're going to adjust the levels to 100 for red, 99 for green, and 97 for blue. That should return your white point very close to 6500 Kelvin. We found that to be a little bit more accurate than the default 6500K mode as well. All of the other settings can stay as they are. Leave gamma on 2.2. So that's the screen set up in its wide gamut mode. You might also want to try out our calibrated ICC profile that's linked in the description below. That will map the color gamut back to sRGB for color aware applications as well. The wide gamut mode does give you a more saturated and vivid looking image, which some people prefer for SDR and desktop applications, but some people would prefer to have a more accurate setup for SDR, in which case you might want to switch to the sRGB mode here instead. That will restrict the color space back to the sRGB gamut. You can leave all of the other settings for RGB channels, brightness and everything as they were. So you can choose whether you want to run in sRGB clamp mode all the time or the wide gamut mode potentially with our ICC profile if you want to map that back to sRGB as well. We've enabled HDR now from Windows. We'd recommend only enabling HDR when you're actually going to view HDR content. That's explained in more detail in our article linked below. You'll see that when you switch into HDR mode, the menu now reflects that and some of the settings are now grayed out. 
Like I said earlier, the OLED care options are remembered independently in HDR mode, so you might want to come and turn some of these on or off, depending on how you've got them set up in SDR. For HDR, what we're going to come and do is change the HDR setting here. We're going to enable the adjustable HDR mode. And with that enabled, that will give you access to more of the screen settings. So you'll see, for instance, the brightness control is now available. We think the best choice for HDR for most people is going to be the gaming HDR mode. Gaming, cinema and console are very similar to one another. The gaming mode seems to offer the best balance between accuracy and brightness. So we're going to stick with that. The True Black 400 mode does have better EOTF tracking and is more accurate, but it doesn't get anywhere near as bright. So we think most people are going to prefer the gaming HDR mode. So we'll leave that set there. And the other thing we think most people want to do is increase the brightness control up to the maximum 100. That will ensure you can reach the full peak brightness capability of the panel. You can change other settings still in this mode, like the OLED anti-flicker, the variable refresh rate setting. You can turn those on and off in HDR as well, depending on your usage. You can adjust color temperature, but it's fine just to leave it on the same user mode that we configured in SDR. If you want a cooler or perhaps a warmer setup, you can use one of these other modes as well. We're going to leave that on user for now. All the other settings are fine. So there you go. There's the screen setup for both SDR and HDR usage, including all of the OLED care options. Let us know in the comments section below if you've got any questions or if anything isn't clear. We do have a full review and a video of this screen. Those are linked in the description below as well. If you found this video useful, please give us a quick like and don't forget to hit subscribe to stay up to date on future reviews, content and other videos. Thank you for watching. We'll catch you next time.